Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. Today we have the Armand Nicolet JS9 300 meter automatic dress diver. As usual, we're gonna open this up, look at all the features and functions, check out the build quality, and then I'll let you know what I think of this new dress diver from Armand Nicolet. Also, make sure you check out my Amazon shopping channel for all of my favorite watches that I've reviewed on this channel, and be sure to visit my Teespring merch store and pick yourself up a t-shirt or a mug. I'll make sure to put both of those links in the description field for you. So as you can see, an impressive display situation going on here. Now, this is one thing I noticed. The box opens up this way. The Armand Nicolet logo is that way. I don't know why they didn't turn it this way to match the way the box opens. I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. There you go. I have to say, this is probably one of the nicest presentation boxes I have seen in a long time. I actually owned an Omega Seamaster a long time ago, and that had a red version of almost this exact same style inner box here. You get your international warranty, you get a microfiber cleaning cloth, and you get this very nice presentation box. And of course, I forgot, you get the manual, the operation instruction manual, there you go. Really, really nice. All this stuff is quality stuff, guys. Now, like you, I, I had never heard of, of Armand Nicolet before, and a, a friend kind of turned me on to him. I was like, you know what, let's, let's check this watch out. So again, really impressive presentation. Get all this stuff out of the way. I'm trying to, to clean up my desk here. All right, so let's open this up. Oh, wow. Guys, the watch is an absolute stunner to look at. And I like it. There's about, there are a couple things on the watch that I don't like, but for the most part, I really, really, really like this watch. Uh, it's extremely well made. I mean, extremely well put together. Uh, tons of little of attention to detail. And uh, it's just a little bit different than your average 300 meter diver. It's a dress diver. Um, yeah, it is waterproof to that depth and probably even a little bit more actually, but it's just, it's more refined. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. This is a really interesting watch. All right, take it off the pillow here. Wow, really nice. And this almost feels like real leather, guys. I know it's probably a pleather type of material, but it almost feels like real leather, real soft. You got Armand Nicolet Tremelin. I guess that's the region in uh, Switzerland where this is made. And you've got a little pocket here for manuals and stuff. Another little pocket, for maybe a watch, like a strap changing tool or something right there. So, and you have this really nice kind of coin. It's almost like a coin that's been inserted into the top lid. Man, I love this box. All right. So let's go ahead and put up the specs on the left-hand side of the screen. And they will, we will really dive, <laughs> dive deep into this watch. You're looking at a 44 millimeter case. It's 13 millimeters thick. It's 52 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, it has a bracelet that goes from 24 millimeters and tapers down to 20 millimeters. It has an AR coated sapphire crystal. It has an AN2846-9 movement, which is really an ETA 2846-9, and Armand Nicolet has modified it a little bit. You've got our power reserve of 48 hours. It is windable. It is hackable. It's water resistant to 300 meters, which of course is 990 feet. You've got the date over there at three o'clock. You do not have a day complication. Uh, you do have a signed screw down crown over here at three o'clock, and I'll talk much more about this later. Uh, you do have a screw down decorated, very decorated case back, and I'll show you that later. That's actually one of my favorite features of the watch and something you wouldn't even normally see on a day-to-day -day basis because it's sitting against your skin on your wrist. Uh, you've got Super Luminova. I don't know which one it is, you know, if it's BGW9 or something like that. Uh, you have, and you have a 120 click unidirectional blue ceramic bezel with a very conical shape, as you can see. Look at how, how conical that, uh, that bezel is. So, Great looking watch. I mean, the blue is just absolutely stunning. It reminds me of the blue in the Yacht Master. I'll go ahead and put that up on the left-hand side screen. Kind of reminds me of that Yacht Master blue of a Rolex. Um, just a stunning watch to look at. Very different. The indexes are different. They're not your normal circles. Looks like they're two little rectangles next to each other. Uh, then you have kind of the, like the, um, what is that thing on the building? The Keystone. Looks like, like a Keystone Index up there at 12 o'clock. Of course, you got Armand Nicolet Tramelan. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Tramelan. <laughs> and you've got automatic down there, a thousand feet, 300 meters. Um, 
It's just, I mean, it's a Swiss made at the bottom. It's just a fantastic, and look at the shine on that, that ceramic bezel. Wow. Really, really cool. Um, the brushed bezels on the applied indexes are also a really nice touch. That's something you're really going to have to kind of take my word for it because you'd have to see this watch in person to see those, how well and how nicely finished the indexes are on this uh, dial. Wow. That nice little brushed kind of bezel around each one. And it looks like you have like a popcorn ceiling style dial. It's a textured dial. It's not completely fat, flat. It's not polished. It's just kind of textured, has a really cool looking look to it. Uh, the whole watch is extremely legible. In fact, let me go ahead, uh, let me wind it up here a little bit. Get that second hand going. There you go. Um, just a very, very well executed dial. And interesting and unique. It's something different. It's not something you see on many watches. So there's the dial. All right, let's talk about the case. Case is Pretty angular. I like these kind of really pronounced lugs that angle down. Of course, you can see the polished and the brushed surfaces all over the place with this watch. Um, nice looking, nice looking case. Uh, really pronounced crown guards up here for the crown. Uh, you don't have drilled lugs, which I thought was a little bit odd in a watch in this price range. I thought you'd probably get drilled lugs on this thing, but you know, not a big deal. Really nice signed crown right there. And it looks like it has this blue plastic dip on it. And I actually like it. There have been some other reviewers that said they didn't like it. I actually like it. I think it's cool. The problem with the crown is, guys, this crown does not hold up to Swiss watch standards. It seemed to want it to bind every time I tried to screw it down. So I'd have to back it off and make sure I didn't cross thread it. Uh, very unimpressed with this crown. It made me really nervous to try to unscrew and screw this crown back in. I mean, it just made me incredibly nervous. And I, I, I just, uh, man, they need to work on this crown. They need to fix this thing. The actual crown, the physical crown itself is fine. The threading inside uh, is something different. They, they need to fix that because, I don't know, maybe this is just a fluke. I'm not quite sure, but it made me really nervous to mess with this crown. Uh, the other feature of the watch that I didn't like was the bracelet. And if you look, the bracelet binds up right here and see, you can even hear it. It just, most of these links are fully articulating. See how they're fully articulating? But right here, I don't know what, what happened with this particular watch. They kind of bind up. See, look, it'll just stay like that by itself. Look at that. A Swiss watch bracelet should not do that. And then you tap it and it pops back down. This one seems to be a little better. There's a little more clearance between the links and the, uh, the lugs. This one does it a little bit but not as bad as this one. So that's a big disappointment, man. And also, this is just a personal preference. Uh, the rest of the bracelet's fine. Like I said, I like those fully articulating lugs. I cannot stand butterfly class because you would think that the watch, the bracelet is locked, right? Because it's got the fold over clasp in the locking position. But if you unlock it like this, just press the two pushers, it easily just comes apart. So, and I know you'd have to press two of them for it to do that. But I would think that if you lock this one down, and you lock this one down, and then you go like this. Okay, you lock it into place. The clasp is not over there yet, right? You think if you lock the clasp in place, that would prevent it from coming undone, even if you press these two pushers, but that's not the case. Press the two pushers, and it just pops right open. Plus, I mean, it's got some nice perlage on the butterfly clasp. I can appreciate that. But man, I cannot stand these butterfly clasps. They're just a pain in the butt to put on. Yeah, they look cool and everything, but just give me a regular tang and buckle or a deployment clasp. Like just like a, a maybe a more refined version of a Seiko bracelet on like a, a monster or something. I just don't like these. They're overcomplicated. You just don't need it. Yeah, they look cool, but you just don't need it. All right. So since I've got it open, let's take a look at this case back. Holy Moses. Maybe one of the nicest case backs I've ever seen on any watch. You've got that stylized fish there, all engraved. You've got sapphire, crystal. Um, let me see, it shows the, a, the Armand Nicolet movement number, which is actually, again, a, um, an ETA movement that they've just modified. Swiss made, uh, stainless steel. Uh, looks like a 1,000 feet there in the middle. Armand Nicolet. Uh, it's just a, just a really, look at the, look at the actual edge, the kind of scalloped edge 
right, it's kind of hard to show you this, but right there where my thumb is, those little scalloped edges, man. Just a fantastic looking case back. Easily probably my favorite case back, guys, maybe of all time. Oh man, it's so freaking cool looking. Really, really nice. So you can feel the detail and the quality that they put into this watch. But again, that crown, big problem for me. The binding up of the bracelet, big problem for me. Oh man, I, just, I can't stand that. It drives me nuts. See how it's kind of binding up like that? I don't know what's going on with this bracelet, man. Anyway, um, but the detail on the watch is fantastic. This ceramic bezel is just beautiful in person, guys. You can see the crystal is slightly raised above the bezel. Let's see if I can get this in focus for you. Slightly raised above the bezel. Nice AR coating, that popcorn dial. Uh, I wish they had maybe put a bezel around the date window possibly, or maybe made it stand out a little bit more. Uh, just a simple, so, so, so far as uh, looks go, it's simple yet it's different. Does that make any sense? Uh, it's a different design. Normally these are circles and the 12 o'clock index is, an, is a triangle or they do something that may, makes it look sort of like a Rolex. They try to put little cues in there that remind you of a Rolex. Armand Nicolet did none of that. This is a completely original design and I really, really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and check out the loom. See if I can find my light here. Let me turn off the uh, monitor. Check out this loom. All right, I can't get it as dark as I want, but there we go. All right, there you go. Not bad. It would have been really cool if they had loomed the bezel as well, but they didn't. But so far as loom goes, not bad. You can see the reflection in the crystal, so it almost makes it look like it has more loom than it does. Because see, look at the one o'clock index and see that little reflection right there in the crystal. So it makes it look like it's even more loomed than it actually is. All right, there you go. So not bad. I mean, it's not the longest lasting loom in the world, but it'll definitely, definitely get the job done. So not too bad. All right, let's turn everything back on here. Let's go ahead and try the watch on. Oh man, this is gonna, this is gonna drive me nuts. Cause I know this is gonna be a pain in the butt to do. Uh, all right, I did it. Now, this watch is too big for me, as you can see. But it's got some, I mean, you're going to get some compliments on this watch for sure. And again, maybe that bracelet issue is just a fluke. And maybe that crown is just a fluke. I mean, this is a Swiss-made watch and they're known for their quality. Um, so I'm going to kind of pass that off as just a fluke for this particular watch. But man, it is a, so far as looks go, guys, I mean, being 300 meters water resistant, it, it, it's it's a fantastic looking watch. One thing I forgot to say, let me go take this thing off. And this is 300 meters water resistant, and it's not really meant to be a tool diver, but it would have been nice if I can get this bracelet off. Here, actually, let me do the little trick here. I don't need to do the clasp. There we go. There you go, now it's off. All right. It would have been nice if they had included a diver extension on this thing. Some sort of dive extension. I mean, this watch is rated to 300 meters. So it'd have been kind of cool, even though nobody would in the history of wearing this watch would probably have ever used a dive extension or ever even gone diving with this watch. It would have been nice if they included a dive extension with this one, since this is technically a, a diver. So let me go ahead and put this thing back together. And uh, anyway, guys, if you want to get one of these, they're not cheap. I can tell you that right up front. Uh, this is not a cheap watch. So kind of hold on to your wallet. Uh, they're $1,700, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they're 1,700 Swiss francs, and the Swiss franc and the US dollar are almost identical right now. So they would be about $1,700 US. Um, so if you wanna get one, they come in, I think 12 different dial, bezel, and bracelet options in strap colors. And again, the current conversion rate is about one-to-one -one between USD and CHF. CHF is Swiss franc, by the way. So they're not cheap, guys, and they don't really go on special. You're not going to get any coupon codes with this watch. I mean, this is a true, true Swiss watch uh, made in Switzerland with Swiss, you know, Swiss production methods, and this is the real deal. Again, not quite sure if that little bracelet thing is just a fluke or the, the, um, the crown is a fluke. I think it is. So go ahead and get yourself one if you like it. I love it. I think it's just, I think it's beautiful. It also reminds me of a uh, two-door Pelagos, and I'll put that up on the left-hand side of the screen. Just that blue, that same color blue. Love it, love it, love it. 
So fantastic looking watch. Go ahead and get yourself one. And guys, that's really been about it for this one. Um, again, go over to our Mon Nicolay site, pick yourself up one if you want to get one. They're 1700 Swiss francs. And also make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you click that notification. All of us YouTubers need you to do that. And we really appreciate it when you do. And I've gotten a ton of new subscribers in the last couple weeks. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm not, you know, questioning a gift horse here. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I have a couple more reviews before I go on Christmas break for a couple weeks. So stay tuned for those. And guys, that's been it for this one. Again, this has been the Armand Nicolet JS9 300 meter automatic dress diver. And I'm not reading that model number. <laughs> and until the next review, I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.